Okay, seeing we have a quorum present uh, combined with our two online participants, board members, and those here. Um, I'll start this by calling this meeting to order. Um, this will be the October 17th meet regular meeting of the Development Review Board of Montpelier. And I will start by introducing the board members starting on my right. Vice Chair. Kevin O'Connell, board member. Meredith Crandall, staff. Rob Goodwin, Chair. And we have Michael Lazorczyk. Michael Lazorczyk, board member. And Jean. Jean Leon, board member. Perfect. Okay. So with that, um, turn over to Meredith for a quick overview of our remote meeting procedures since we have. Both. I'm going to keep this really brief because the only people we have on remotely right now are board members. Um, so this is mostly for anybody watching via Orca Media. Uh, okay. And I actually put down my little spiel. Give me just a second. I think I'd have it memorized by now. All right, we're gonna wing it. Uh, okay, so for anybody watching tonight's development review board meeting via the Zoom platform, um, you can access tonight's meeting and participate, ask questions, just make comments um, by typing this link here into your web browser, um, or you can call in at this phone number and plug in this meeting ID. If you're having any issues logging into the meeting, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. I will be monitoring my email throughout the meeting. Um, in case anybody needs to get in and can't, I will do my best to assist you. Um, if you do log in remotely, please know that turning on your video is optional. Um, and we will ask that you remain muted unless you're speaking. Um, if somebody does log on remotely, we'll I'll call at a point, some point in a break um, to just check and see who you are and see what it is you want to talk about um, so that we can have you speak at the appropriate time. Should somebody try to log on and be unable to, and I would get notice of that through my email, then we will have to continue the hearing to a time and place certain because the online access is listed as an option for accessing this public hearing. All right, I will turn this back over to the chair. Thank you, Meredith. Next item will be approval of the agenda. Motion by Sharon. Second by Kevin. All those in favor of approving the agenda, say aye. Aye. Agenda is approved. Uh, thank you all for coming this evening. Uh, we wish everyone uh, safety out there. COVID levels have come and gone and whatnot, uh, but um, we're still here and everyone appears to be healthy. So that's, that's good. Um, we have one application this evening. Um, and so, yeah, John, please come on up. Uh, but hold on, we got to approve the minutes from October 3rd. Uh, we actually have that on after 8 Dairy Lane for tonight. We do. Yep, Just, we bumped it to the end. See, I miss it every time, and then <laughs> you changed it on me. <laughs> I, I think because I think it was a, we tend to do it at the end for a design review committee. Uh, um, like actually. And so we can keep it this way if you want. Okay. Note taken. Do you have your I do. Cheat sheet. Yeah. Um, so you know the drill. So we'll swear you in uh, for tonight's testimony. You solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury. I do. Yes. Would you just <laughs> would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, okay. I'm uh, Jack McCullough. I live on Town Street in Montpelier, and I am not the applicant. I am uh, the the applicants. Uh, Adam McCullough and Mary McQuigan are my son and daughter-in-law, and I helped them prepare the application. And uh, because uh, 
my daughter-in-law is out of town and my son is home with their two daughters. Um, I offered to come and present this uh, application for them. And uh, the proposal is uh, an application to uh, widen their driveway and curb cut, um, essentially so that uh, they can get in and out of the driveway without having one of them back the car out, you know, depending on who's out and who's in, back the car out uh, with the kids in the house uh, to let the other one in or out. We have uh, the proposal is to widen the driveway by eight feet. And uh, I was informed by Meredith that the uh, Department of Public Works wanted us to check on how wide the driveway is now. And we checked, uh, we measured it the other day. The driveway is 15 feet, nine inches. So with the addition of eight feet, that would bring it to 23 feet, nine inches. And uh, according to uh, Corey Line at the Department of Public Works, they would have no objection to the uh, driveway widening as long as it's no more than 24 feet. Um, we also have letters from, from two of the neighbors, uh, Marianne Sullivan at one Deerfield Drive and uh, Andy and jo Joey at Crane. I'm having a little trouble reading their name, but these are the neighbors directly across the street at uh, at one at nine Dairy Lane, and they indicate that they have uh, that they support the proposal to widen the driveway mm -hmm. at eight Dairy Lane, and I can provide those letters. Awesome. That's a nice bonus. Yes. Thank you. And. Yeah, and the people in Nine Dairy Lane already have a driveway that's double wide that is directly across the street from them. So I would I would think that they're the people who would be potentially most affected by them in terms of pulling out or uh, or pulling in, and they have no objection to it. Um, I think that's about all I have to say, unless there are any uh, questions. Well, that's probably good for now, Meredith. You want to give a summary here of key points? Or yeah, still... I mean, I think that you know, because with the new information, and I actually have an email of that backing up the measurement, but we've also had it mentioned here on the record. Um, you know, the the max width of the curb cut was one of the things that the board needed to make sure was um, within the VTrans DPW requirements, and that is now we know that. Um, so really the big thing here is does the DRB feel like the um, driveway being widened so that it is now less than a hundred feet from the closest intersection? Do they feel like that's an acceptable change? I, you know, personally looking at all the information, both from the neighbors and from department of public works and the fact that this is a small driveway that, you know, my suggestion is to lean that way, but it's the board's call. Um, that is the only issue outstanding here, and that's under section 3010. Why is this the distance between them? They didn't have any problems there. They had no problems there between between the distance from the intersection to this driveway. I mean, it's right now it's I think it's gonna be maybe four feet less than the minimum distance of a hundred feet. And this is a very this is not a highly traveled road at all. Um, and, you know, it's already, we're not, I didn't flag the distance from like the driveways across the street, anything like that, because those, those current nonconformities aren't going to change. That's not an issue. Um, and, and honestly, you know, if I had, if it, this is just one of those things where it just has to come to the board because I don't have the discretion to authorize this. I, I would submit that this is really an incidental change and um you know i'm prepared to make a a motion to approve uh, whenever the chair deems it uh, appropriate i will i just have i have one one question just for clarity here at what point do we measure from 
from the intersection. Has that defined in the regs? It is. So you measure from the inside of the curb to the inside of the curb. And with the, yep. you know, you've got for this, for the intersection, it would be sort of from the, the rounded point if it's not a clear corner, probably. Midpoint of the curve. Yeah. -ish. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Perfect. I'm, uh, uh, so if we have a motion from, yes, go ahead, Kevin. Oh, yeah. Motion from Kevin. Motion for me. Motion for Kevin to approve the application um, as proposed. Um, I don't think there's anything more um, to that. Um, so, yeah. Is there a second? I second that motion. <laughs> second by Sharon. Um, any discussion on the motion? Uh, seeing nothing from our remote board members. Seeing none on a remote platform and in the room here. Um, Sharon, how do you vote? Kevin? Yes. Abby? Yes. Gene? Yes. Michael? Yes. Rob, myself, was yes. That is unanimously approved. Uh, Great. Thank you for coming in, Jack. Thanks, everybody. Good to see you all. So the official approval will follow the written decision. It, this isn't a really complicated decision, so it shouldn't take too long. I will aim to get that out as soon as possible. It'll need the chair's signature, but we'll be able to issue the permit the same time we issue the decision. Um, we can, we normally mail that, but we've still been having issues with certified mail. So we'll probably email you and Adam and Mary and suggest that somebody come and pick it up. Okay. Okay. Since you submitted these comments, we'll make sure it's oh, yeah. into the record. Yep. Those will get stamped and put in the file. Thanks, folks. Good to see everybody. Good yeah. to see you, Jack. See you later. Thank you. Yeah, curious what, what's uh, happening with uh, certified mail. Just not happening. We've we've had the last two years. We've had all sorts of issues sending certified mail to either businesses or personal homes where the post office. I don't know if they just make one trip and then don't go again, mm -hmm. and then it sits in the post office for sometimes up to a month and then we finally get it back so that permit and the blue notice card are just in limbo when it's supposed to have been posted up at the site so in general we aren't mailing those automatically anymore even though we're required to send decisions certified mail under statute we have to send all decisions out certified mail so we actually do the certified mail card in our office and make people sign that before we give them the decision next item will be to uh Approve the minutes for October 3rd. I'll make a motion to approve the min minutes from October 3rd. Motion by Abby. <laughs> okay. Second. second by Jean. And uh, any discussion on the approval of the minutes? Seeing none, um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, minutes are approved for October 3rd. Thank you all. And um, so the next meeting will be the November 7th. November 7th. Yep, three weeks. And um, there is one application oh, yeah. that um, I think is a um, sketch plan for a PUD, which this board has never actually reviewed a PUD under the new regs. So it's new territory, but it's also sketch plan. So, you know, it's good to have the discussion about how we are going to proceed with reviewing that final application and certainly a good point for feedback. So if you have time to look at that ahead of time, that'd be awesome. Yep. And this will be a PUD that's trying to take advantage of the um, density bonuses. Um, and yep. And so this will be the first time with the board interpreting how to actually calculate that because it is not spelled out in the regulations as to how to calculate a 50% density bonus, what numbers you use that are trying to find 50% of so, um, yep, it's all on that pending applications page. So you can go take a look at it now. Um, and then anything that I add to the packet along with my staff report will get folded in in the version that's online on the agenda in a couple of weeks. Um, so there's that. And just a quick heads up if we're in other business, if I can other mention business, something else. Let's go ahead, please. Um, so Monday, this coming Monday, the 24th, the planning commission will be taking up the 
new design guidelines that the Historic Preservation Commission put together. So these are the guidance for both the zoning administrator, the design review committee, um, for administering the regulations, as well as for any applicants or just property owners in the city in how to um, follow the design regulations, as well as just pointers on maintenance of homes and buildings. Um, there's all sorts of stuff in here that isn't actually requirements, that's just guidance. Mm -hmm. um, and so the planning commission will be taking that up. They need to approve it and then it would go to city council as approved quote unquote policy so that we can actually start issuing that to people for guidance on how to, to meet those standards. So if you're interested and want to just log in and take a look, feel free. Um, but I want to just make sure it was out there because if, if somebody does use that as a basis for appealing something, um, mm. but they don't like that the design review committee did, the board will need to be familiar with them. <clears throat> oh, it sounds like we're going to be, we're going to be creating pre uh, precedents with these new, with these new, th these new uh, requests for the dent for density. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. Yes, for the November 7th meeting, um, how the board ultimately, when we get to the final application, um, how they interpret that density bonus. Yeah, that'll be precedent. So whatever guidance you give the applicant during sketch on the 7th, that's going to steer them. Um, it's Yep, it's going to start the process. We have, we have to have a really good reason to uh, give them different guidance on the final application than what we give them in sketch. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so yeah. Wait, I um I know the North College. Yeah. At the end of North College. It's the one of the very, very end of North College Street. Down the hill. By the way. Um ho hold on, hold on. I will um I can pull it up on Zoom. Give me a second. Um and I can share what, my what's, screen. What's the address? 12 North College Street. Oh, okay. Yeah. We Gene, what what do you want to say? Oh, uh, I'm familiar with the property. I could give some insight when that time comes. I, I bid on it actually, and I spent a couple hours, a good amount of time in and out of that building. Um, it, it's quite interesting, quite large. But so, okay. yeah. Yeah. So um, here's Main Street. Here's Street. Town Street. Um, yep. Up here is Murray Hill. And here's North College. It's kind of weird because it's nowhere near College Street. Oh, oh yeah, sorry. Huh. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Uh, I got ahead of myself. Share screen. Um, okay. So up here is Murray Hill. Big condo development that's been there forever, right? Here's Main Street, Town Street, Town Hill Road. Mm -hmm. When you go, instead of taking, going downtown Hill Road, you make this left and then North College Street, nowhere near College Street is off of town. And the parcel, I don't have the parcel map, is here at the end. So it's a funky little rectangle shaped like this. Oh, I'm not even sure there was a road there. Yeah, yep. so I was, I was thinking it was in college. Nope, you know? nope. And this is, this is a huge previously barn that parts of it were converted already to dwelling unit um which is oh that is okay yeah this is um oh and so the proposal in the sketch and this is all just a preview you can go go look um is to renovate the inside of this into five dwelling units and it's i mean it's like it's like ten thousand. 10,000 square feet inside something. It's oh, huge. That's cool. 9, minutes. Yeah. It, okay. yeah. Yeah. So it's it's going to be a really interesting application. Um, and I look forward to everybody's thoughts on. It looks like the driveway also connects onto Main Street, but maybe you nope. can't see that. Nope. That's a different. That's um, a different driveway. That's a different driveway yeah. that connects okay. here to this. Yeah. Um, but no, this just dead ends right here. Yeah. I don't, I don't see how they could put. The driveway is pretty narrow going in, and then the for parking spaces is, is quite limited. Because I think so Jim, I Jim, we should probably leave the specific okay. discussion to the to the meeting so people don't get confused since we're on the yeah, <laughs> yeah. on the record here. Yep. 
Yeah. So you can, but go feel free to go to the pending applications page that's yeah. linked. If you look in the left hand column of the agendas page, there's a pending applications for hearings. Um, and the application for this project as submitted is there. You can review it um, and, you know, take notes at this point, but then make sure to, to, you know, hold any final conclusions for yourself for the sketch plan until you see the final packet that gets posted with the meeting agenda the week before the 7th, because there will be departmental comments that I add, um, as well as my staff report and anything else that, that I collect during my full review over the next couple of weeks. Oh, good. The application, like when you pull it up on the, yeah. um, what's this? What's the, its name? The, the application. Yeah. Oh, the upload was the name. The name was the yeah. application. Okay, so, I'll talk to Audra. It must have accidentally <laughs> got renamed. I just something. Noticed that. And I looked at it. I was like, hmm, an employment application. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a first for the day. That's right. A little new job. <laughs> okay, I'll have to. I'll thank you for that. I was um, already reading it for like 10 minutes and then I went to something else and I was looking through my tabs and it said employment application. I'm like, what? what, 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 what open. <laughs> Um, so I think that's it for this evening. Uh, we have attendance taken, I believe. So, um, I will accept a motion for adjournment. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All righty. Motion to adjourn. Seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Have a good night, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Thanks everyone.